sorry about that. Um, but yeah, I'm going to be talking about immune builder, a set of deep learning models we trained to predict the structure of immune proteins. So um, for the majority of the talk, I'm going to be focusing on a work on antibodies. Uh, for those of you that are not very familiar with antibodies, these are key proteins in the immune system. The job is to identify and neutralize um, almost any pathogen with high affinity and specificity. Um, and they have this sort of Y-shaped structure in general. The global structure of antibodies is pretty much conserved and it's very easy to predict. Um, but the, the part that makes, that allows them to bind to a wide variety of things is the CDR loop. So it's these six loops on the point of the um, every region. So it's like sort of shown there. And, and yeah, this, this varies greatly in sequence and structure, uh, allowing it to have present a very different surface. Um, antibodies are interesting also uh, because they are one of the most successful types of biotherapeutics. I think there's over a hundred antibody drugs. So there's quite a bit of interest in these molecules. Um, the other thing that's happened recently, or relatively recently, I guess everyone's heard about by now and it's already been talked about in the last two talks, is uh, alpha 2 came out. So alpha 2 can predict the structure of almost any protein very accurately. Um, it's not great for antibodies, but alpha multimer is because antibodies have two, two, two chains. Um, and alpha multimer is basically state of the art for, for antibodies. The problem with both of these methods, what well, problem, I don't know, um, is that they are both quite computationally intensive. Um, and in the case of antibodies, we want to be generating structures for millions of sequences. Um, a run of alpha multimer takes around half an hour if you've got a GPU. Um, and unless you Google millions, half an hour, it uh, starts getting a bit not doable. Um, yeah, in the case of, of antibodies specifically, uh, it's what I already did earlier, uh, next generation sequencing is being used routinely to analyze um, the repertoire, the immune repertoire. Each of these studies will generate millions of sequences um, and there's databases like OAS that compile these sequences. I think OAS now has over 2 billion sequences. So if you're trying to predict the structure for these things with alpha, it just becomes um, not possible computationally. Again, unless you've got huge resources, but even then. Um, but uh, well, I guess I don't have to say this in the 3D sector, but analyzing, analyzing the, the antibodies in terms of structure provides way better insights on their function and what they combine to. Um, so having the structure is very interesting because that's what determines what they all mind. So um, I've sort of got the the plot from the alpha two paper here uh, showing um, yeah the architecture. So we, we set out to our idea was sort of how can we speed this up, speed it up a lot. Um, that was basically the, the objective for antibody prediction. And in the case of antibodies, it turns out because the because the structure of the majority of it is pretty much conserved and the structure of the CDR loops is not, the diversity in CDR loops is not majority, the majority of it is not driven by evolution, like for the majority of the proteins, but by VDJ recombination and somatic recombinations. Um, there's not much coevolutionary signal. Coevolutionary signal doesn't help much for predicting um, the structure of CDR loops. So, uh, what we did basically is remove the MSA, the evil former, and just sort of try and see if we could learn from the structure module, like from sequence directly. Um, yeah, this is sort of the, 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 the question we, we had. Um, it's can we accurately and rapidly predict antibody structures um, way faster than the alpha can. And so, so to do this, we, we took only the, the alpha 2 structure module and trained it, modified it slightly so it would take 
single sequences. Um, we slightly changed their estimation to make it more antibody specific and slightly changed the loss functions and the architecture to, so it will work better with antibodies. Um, uh, you, you can ask me how those later, I'm doing a poster tomorrow if, if you want to go in depth. Um, and we trained it only on one type of one protein family so it can overfit to that protein family as much as it wants. Um, and uh, basically it, it worked. So so this this works. Um, so th this is a table with some other, the first four are some other antibody specific um, methods for predicting, uh, methods for predicting antibody structures. Um, and the bottom two is alpha ultimatum and, and able to do two, which is our method. Um, and as you can see, we basically perform as well as alpha ultimatum. Um, I like that it's zero H3, which is the, the hardest to predict of the CDR loops were a little bit better, but it's not really significant. It's just um, basically work, work around. Um, although it makes me happy that for this test case, we're a little bit better. <laughs> and it's over a thousand times faster. Um, so that's, so that's uh, over a hundred times faster. Um, so that's pretty, pretty cool. And, and we, in, in the paper, if, if you want to read the paper, um, we go through an extensive benchmark of like side chain prediction, um, the, the prediction of the angle between the domains, um, and a, a bunch of other things, um, and find that it's basically equivalent at, at everything while being a hundred times faster. So, you know, for, for antibodies, it's, it's better, I would like to say. And so, so then we, this was actually a review too, <laughs> that asked us to, to look into what is the model learning. So they sort of hypothesized that it might just be learning to homology model to just copy paste CDRs it's already seen. Um, so what we did, what we saw here is of the, the RMSD of CR83, which is the, the hardest loop to model and the most important mining against the sequence identity to the closest antibody in training set. So for each one of these dots is a um, uh, data point in the test set that hasn't seen in training, and then how close is it to things in training set. And basically we see no no clear correlation. So so it's so clearly the model the models are learning something more than just copy pasting um, CDR loops, um, which is good. I guess the, the proof of that is that it's it's better than homology modeling methods as I, that I saw in the previous slide. Um, so yeah, um, but we also know it's not learning physics either. So it's not learning the physics of protein structure. Um, and we see this because these models and, and this is our model, but not just our model. Many other models also generate these unphysical structures sometimes with clashing atoms. Um, cis peptide bonds. Our model doesn't generate the amino acids, but other models do. Um, um, and and yeah, this this sort of makes sense. It's not it, there's not enough data for it to learn how the physics of this works or anything like that. Um, th these things can be fixed um, post prediction um, with refinement, like was said in the previous talk. Um, we use some MD based refinement and it seems to fix everything. And we tried it on different types of proteins, like TCRs and antibodies, and it works too. So, so this is uh, an approach of speeding up um, alpha-folds or structure prediction when you want, when you really know which protein family you're in. Uh, for TCRs, it does basically as well as alpha-fold multima, and I'm not going to talk more about that. For nanobodies, it actually does a little bit better, um, which is pretty cool. Um, and now, so the other results for nanobodies for CO3, you see it does slightly better. Um, and and our, our hypothesis for this is that um, so nanobodies and the heavy chain in antibodies has a very similar sequence. However, there's a lot more antibody than nanobody data in the PDB. So during training, Alfold has seen many sequence, nanobody-like sequences, which are antibody heavy chains, and has learned to sort of 
predict those conformations um, one is given another chain. Well, uh, antibodies come with the with the light chain also. So as you can see, it's the more transparent one here. So it sort of learns to predict the H3 loop in a way that it won't, like in an erect conformation, where it won't clash with the light chain. Um, however, in nanobodies, the light chain is not there. So, so it is allowed to, to fold where the light chain would be. So it's sort of learning this um, implicit context, which in, in this case is making the predictions worse. So I, I found this quite interesting that um, that you have to think with alpha to predictions. You 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 have to think about which context is of proteins like this usually seen in, because that might be affecting um, the prediction. And sometimes that's something you want. Sometimes it's not. Um, yeah. Okay. So uh, in summary, training a structure prediction method for a specific family of proteins. Um, this is an effective way of speeding up structure prediction. Um, so we saw this for antibodies, but it worked for the protein types also. Um, and you don't, because you're focusing on that specific type, evolution information doesn't give you that much. And you can do so without much loss in accuracy. Um, yeah, deep learning methods will are not learning physics and will generate unphysical structures. But this can be fixed using force fields and uh, other post refinement methods. And Alofold 2 will predict protein structures to be in the context it has most often encountered them in. So that's sort of the example with nanobodies. Um, I, I guess it's probably true in for the protein social. So with that, I would like to say thank you to Charlotte, uh, Guy and Alex, and uh, Catherine for supervising me, um, the Oxford Protein Fantics Group for being fun and support and um, all that, and, uh, and my funders, EPSRC and Ross. And then um, there's a few of us from my group um, that have posters. Um, so here are the titles, here are the faces, go and annoy them. I've also got a poster. If you have questions, feel free to ask me then. It might be easier than now. I don't know. <laughs> okay. Thanks a lot. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you, Brennan. Are there any questions for Brennan? Hi. Yeah, you have a question? Do we have a microphone that works? Can you come over here while we have that? Uh, so the confirmation of side chains is taken care of by the MD after. No, it predicts them, but it doesn't also the confirmation of the yeah, side chains, side not chains. just the backbone. Yeah, predicts side chains. Also. But then the MD will fix it. Then, if there's any classes, they will. Um, depends on which uh, depends depends on which area of the of the protein. Sometimes they don't need any fixing. If it's quite accurate, if it's an inaccurate bit that it's uncertain about, then they often need fixing. Yeah. Hi, so how often does it predict unphysical structures? Um, so it, it, it depends. Um, so in the when it's not in the hardest terrorist model, it's quite often basically. Yeah. And in, in parts like the framework or regions that it's quite confident, it's usually not they're usually physical. Yeah. So to me, it feels like a double edged sword because it helps you not get kinetically trapped. But on the other hand, if you don't predict multiple confirmations, then you might miss some good ones, right? Yeah, that's true. Um, but that's, I think that's a flaw in general with protein structure prediction. You're, you're assuming there is one structure to predict. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Yeah.